Hi and welcome to the final episode in season one of the Bridges Television Program brought to you by the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment. It has indeed been our pleasure sharing the highlights, activities, opportunities and initiatives offered by the Ministry. I am Liam Paris Boyne and with me is the Mr. Doughty. This week, we are on location at the headquarters of the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment at Sky Mall, Hackett Hall, St. Michael. Today, we will look at some more of the activities, initiatives, programs and opportunities that seek to build up our communities and assist in the development of youth and sports across Barbados. The Community Development Department is proud to have trained thousands of Barbadians over the years in various disciplines. Congratulations and thank you for participating. To persons who have completed a course but have not yet collected their certificate, please contact us at 535-1669 or 535-3191 Monday to Thursday between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. You can also visit us online at comdev.gov.bb and click Request Certificate to send us your details. The Community Development Department, we are committed to serving you and our communities. National Summer Camps are here again. Children across Barbados can enjoy a variety of activities, visual and performing arts, field trips and camaraderie this summer at the 2023 camps programs. Once again, the Ministry will be partnering with the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training to provide nutritious meals for our campers. Ms. Carolyn Garns, Youth Commissioner and Camp Coordinator, spoke to us about the 2023 program which commenced on July 24th. Well, the National Summer Camps is on stream. We have 45 locations across the island, um, one in, at least one in every parish. The camps are open to campers ages 4 to 15 years old. The theme for the camps is Creativity, Achieving Meaningful Progress and is an acronym for CAMP. The camps started on the 24th of July and will finish on the 25th of August. Well, there are a lot of exciting activities this year. We are going to be doing some work with climate change. We're going to be having some martial arts. We're going to be doing some competitions, sports, cultural arts, craft. They can go on tours. They'll be having some exciting competitions. We are looking to do a, a essay and poster competition dealing with climate change. And we're looking to do some exciting prizes. So that is something the campers can look forward to. Yes, we have two special needs camps. One is the Anhill School and the other is the National Disabilities Unit Annex at Colmora. There are 45 camps across the island. We are partnering with the Ministry of Education and the School Meals Department and they will be providing lunches for all of the campers and the camp staff again this year. You can sign up for camp by going to the camp venue the first day of camp. You can send an email to ydp at barbados.gov.bb or you can visit the ministry here in Sky Mall. Graduates of the Sports for Life program were told to be always on the lookout for opportunities in life by preparing adequately. This advice came from Sports Development Officer in the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Informant Stephen Rowe as he addressed the Sports for Life closing luncheon at the Barbados Beach Club at Maxwell Portsmouth Christ Church. Let's take a look. You were presented with an opportunity here at Sports for Life. But that opportunity I don't want you to see as the end of the road. You're graduating. I want you to see that as just a step in your preparation for other opportunities to come. My heart is full of other emotions. Every year, for the previous 
13 years, I, I gave my, I have a dream speech. They have a dream that we would have multiple centers. And I am so thrilled that this is the first year that that dream became a reality because of the ministry. And I want us to give another round of applause for our ministry that has recognized the importance of this program and allowed me to, to make that I have a dream speech a reality. We want to thank you, the parents from the ministry. We recognize that your role has been key as far as getting the children out and supporting them on weekends, participating in the program and making sure that they do everything that they're supposed to do. This works for life program actually it changed me in many ways. Like it helped me with my social skills, learning, cricket, all sorts of sports, math, English. If you can name it, it will try to teach it. So really and truly it was a very good year in many ways because we did a lot of things that are sentimental so it's really and truly if you put your mind to it it will put you will feel that you belong and then finally i want to recognize the talk to the opportunity now to you young people yeah at the beginning of this year i said that that you have an opportunity and i wanted to encourage you to take the opportunity of being exposed and of the gifts of their time and their experience and the knowledge that they were imparting on you of the staff and the coaches, etc. And I want to encourage you to, now that you've been through the program and that you've learned all of these many things, to take this as an opportunity to spread the word, but also to use that to build on yourself. For me personally, um, so when I joined the program, it was just for like a pastime. And then, like, I was there for like roughly five years. So, I gained a lot. And plus two, they also recommended me to YMCA. And after YMCA, I realized that that also opened a lot of doors for me in my life. So I'm very grateful to the Sports for Life program. You're leaving Sports for Life, you're graduating from Sports for Life. Whenever an opportunity for any training, any areas of your personal development comes along, don't just shrug it aside, give it a serious second look. Because training is one of these things which once you've gone through it, it prepares you for life. And who knows, in your future when an opportunity comes along and you have that training under your belt, then you are better positioned to capitalize on that training. So if you don't remember anything else that I've said, remember that luck is where opportunity meets preparation. You take the opportunity to prepare for life, and when the opportunity comes along, for you to get a job, for you to advance in life, you would be well, you would be well prepared and well positioned to grab that opportunity. Are you 16 to 22 years old? Then the Barbados Youth Advanced Corps may be for you. The two-year program which features a 10-week residential phase offers academic training, life skills, physical training, and career development. As a BYAC trainee, there are also opportunities to train in various disciplines at the Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute of Technology, Barbados Community College, and Baima. Uh, early in the morning, do some drills, or it's PT while I'm yawning. Sun ain't gonna kill, but it's all for the better me. Trying to change my destiny. BYAC, molding the youth of tomorrow. BYAC, teaching us to lead not to read the two trails. Learning life skills, marching on till confidence fails. The Barbados Youth Advance Corps. Building the youth for a brighter tomorrow. Call 535-0180 or 535-3835 for more information. The York Region District School Board of Canada and the Barbados government are partnering to launch World Tennis in over 200 schools in Canada. Megan Glanfield of the York District School Board visited the island last week and toured World Tennis facilities to see how the sport can be implemented in Canadian schools. Ms. Glanfield paid a courtesy call to the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment 
where talks were held with Permanent Secretary Charlie Brown, Sports Development Officer Stephen Rowe, Sports Consultant Jamal Smith, and Senior Youth Commissioner Sean Burke on the possibilities of the partnership. Yeah, I think right now it's a pretty unknown entity in Canada and that only the people who come from here really know how it's played. So I'm down here trying to learn the game and learn what it means to people so that we can come back and share it starting in our phys ed classes and just sharing a game that means a lot to a lot of people. In terms of continuing the momentum, continuing the excitement um, across the board, once the kids are aware, the kids in Ontario and, and other jurisdictions as well, once they are aware that there's an opportunity for them to come to Barbados, to participate at the levels that they are and to be able to experience what it is like to witness the, the top level players in full flight, the, the, the Venoms, the Michael Jacksons and the like in full flight, I think that's going to be very, very exciting for them. I think it's a ton of fun, so I think people are going to love it and I think it's, like I said, a really easy game to start playing. I think the competitive part of it is going to take a little bit more to teach us so that our kids can compete anywhere near the level that your kids are playing, uh, but I think people are going to love it. I think it's going to be great and we're looking forward to bringing it home. Um, while some of the coaches there will be upskilled in the area of road tennis and they will be, into, they will be able to introduce it um, to the kids, when it comes now to the more advanced levels, there will be a need to get some of the more seasoned and experienced coaches on board. And that's where our coaches come in and we would be more than willing to assist Ontario. And not just Ontario, the, um, the, the wider Canada and any jurisdiction that would be interested in advancing road tennis at a high level in their jurisdiction to get our processes in place and to get everything approved by the right people. I'm down here as an individual, so just someone who's an enthusiast about the game and uh, passionate about getting kids moving and engaged. So yeah, I'm excited about all the possibilities of what can be and trying to also be uh, reasonable and measured in terms of what expectations are, because like anything else, there's systems in place. Yeah, I think getting kids out playing and moving and outside is fantastic. And I think learning about games that are important to people in other parts of the world is exciting in a different way too. So we're really excited about it. A very exciting opportunity for us, given the, the number of schools that exist in York. They're very excited about um, participating in it, by introducing road tennis in the first instance. Um, as Megan would have explained, she sees it, well they see it as a very inexpensive sport. Um, a sport to which there are basically no barriers, anyone can play the game. So implementation is going to be quite easy in Ontario. I'm so hopeful that that can happen. Yeah, I think it's going to depend a lot on who the people are that are involved in the mobilizing of it. So my role is to get kids playing and I am very confident that we can do that. But in terms of the broader picture, in terms of building cross-cultural understanding, that's the dream, right? When we start to see each other's humanity and what matters to each other, then really special things can happen when we get it up and running and, and not if Canada can be one of our partners Canada will be one of our key partners um, how can we have a, an international road tennis federation and Canada being one of our players one of our key partners as it currently stands and not involved in it now, the international federation uh, when you look across Canada uh, relative to Barbados the number of players you're going to have in Canada um, based on their their size and their demographics, um, you will have thousands of players playing in Canada. So certainly they will be a key partner in the International World Tennis Federation. And we are actually hoping that we can use Canada as the model um, to implement world tennis across other, uh, other countries. It has been a very exciting time these past 12 weeks creating, developing and bringing the British television series to you. We hope that you have enjoyed seeing the work of the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment just as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. It has been a pleasure receiving your feedback and responding to your requests. Here is a quick look back at some of the highlights of the series. 23 has been designated as the Year of the Youth. Here at the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, my team is doing all that is necessary to empower our young people this year. Um, currently, we have Bitch to the World that is going, that is looking to uncover new talent as it relates to entertainment, as it relates to areas where our young people can excel in the um, entertainment industry. 
uh, a focus is on singing but it is also a program where I have seen dance come to the fore as well as spoken word. In addition to that we have rolled out this year uh, the National Mentorship Program that has provided an opportunity for some of our focused young people to impact on younger persons as well. Sports is something that is ever present and what we are doing in sports we're looking to ensure that we have community coaches that will buttress what is currently happening at the National Sports Council. And what do I mean by community coaches? These coaches will go into communities across the country, identify a target population, 10, 15 or so youngsters, and they will provide all the rudimentary training for those youngsters at the community level who are interested in football, basketball, netball. These are some of the programs that we're looking to do in sports. We are about to enter into the last final stage, which is basically the occupation of these stalls. These young persons have worked not only in a literal way of building out themselves, but figuratively as well. They, has been, they have been involved in all the training. They have dedicated themselves in a wholesome way to this exercise. And I want to thank them for walking the journey with us. We have started the process. This pilot project where we saw Silver Hill, Bonnet, Parkinson Field, and the Ivy. Four block projects. And when I say block project, because we recognize in this country, there's a certain, what I call, stigma associated with blocks. It is expected that we will move from one constituency to the next constituency trying to empower our young people as far as being self-employed. We have the Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme on board in terms of providing that training that would allow them to go to the next level. So I am pleased to be carrying on the mantle of what was um, left by the previous minister in terms of this particular project. And you will see going through Barbados ever so often that we will be at locations making sure that our young people have an opportunity to be in a structured environment as it relates to business. I'm deeply honored that I was selected as CARICOM Youth Ambassador. I'm super excited to get started into the role and um, one thing that I would do especially as a CARICOM Youth Ambassador having how the title also as UNICEF Youth Advocate is to ensure that the rights of our children and young people across the region continues to be protected. But also I think it is important in this role to hold myself accountable with CARICOM Youth Ambassadorial Team, stakeholders and policy makers as well to ensure that the issues that are affecting us as young persons are being seriously addressed. I'm humbled and very appreciative of being selected and appointed to the role of CARICOM Youth Ambassador. And today is with great privilege that I I'm joined by experienced young professionals who are committed to championing youth development, not just in Barbados, but across the region. And with that said, I am looking forward to commitment furthering our collective efforts towards not just cultural development in the region, but the upliftment of this CYA program for another 30 years. And having our meetings together for the last few weeks with our regional stakeholders and in discussions with Ashley early morning at five o'clock, six o'clock, and having the phone calls as early as trying to be able to figure out where do we go from here after we have finally received our phone calls and we have finally received our letters. How do we continue to empower the next generation of young people for tomorrow? We have determined that not just the community is a place that we need to uplift, but we need to engage our micro societies. And while I commend the efforts of the ministry so far in terms of tackling crime and violence, we too as CARICOM Youth Ambassadors will seek to do our part to be able to join that cause as we have just recently concluded our summit discussing violence across the region. The Youth Development Programme is about addressing the needs, aspirations of the young persons here in Barbados. We're here to help them to reach their fullest potential. The aim of the Youth Development Programme is about developing young persons between the ages of 9 to 29 and we, look, and we do this whether it is culturally, socially or economically. As it relates to the vision of the Youth Development Program, it is about youth engagement, it's about youth empowerment, it's about developing young persons so that they are fully engaged in their various communities across Barbados. 
we also have a mission and the mission of the youth development program it is about increasing empowerment it's about enhancing skills development it's about reducing violence and crime it's about boosting employability and employment um, we also we don't work in silos we work in collaboration with other government agencies we also work with non-governmental agencies and we also work with international agencies as well I sincerely believe that yes should operate as a family families operate in a way that they help one another, they ensure the success of each member of the team. That is how we at YES promote our existence. We all work for the betterment of everyone. I'm going to say it up front and center. Based on that, let's support one another business to help it grow. I know there's a great push online to support businesses and I trust that we would help one another to grow the businesses within the entrepreneurship scheme and the entrepreneurship ecosystem on a whole. I can assure you that the facilitators go the extra mile to ensure that all the knowledge that you all need, you can get. The knowledge is there, just tap into the facilitators we have. They are proven, they are loyal, and they buy into the whole scenario of yes, promoting strong young entrepreneurs. This initiative here this morning is the orientation for Barbados Youth Advanced Score Technical and Vocational Transitional Literacy Program. I know it's a mouthful, but what the program is, it's really like a bridging program. It bridges the trainees between the first phase where they were in the residential phase, and then this phase where they were now going into the technical and vocational training. What this program does, it prepares them really to excel when they move off into SJPI, BIMAP, um, Barbara's Vacation Training Board, and all those other programs. Because the institutions had found that while many of the trainees were technically competent, they struggled in certain areas for their assignments and so on. And we felt this was a perfect opportunity for the NTA to really transform their experience so they could fully embrace this technical vocational training. I am happy to see all of the young people here today to talk about the issue that pertains to mental health and stigma and I hope that we can come to some sort of agreement and for those who may not be as aware to learn something from young people because we do have mental health issues, we do have problems that do affect us and this is a, something that we as a community of young people, we deem it necessary to have our voice. So I do hope that um, people who are listening, they are learning and taking note because the young people are here and we are present in Barbados. The Community Development Department is a social service agency, but not like the traditional social service agencies. Our focus is community driven. It is community oriented. We have 39 functioning community centers and resource centers so that persons can have a safe space to conduct business, utilize training and recreational facilities. So persons can go in and they can have a myriad of activities, cake and pastry, dressmaking, if there's a birthday celebration, a baby shower, wedding receptions. So we at the Community Development Department, we're inviting you to come on in and ensure that you utilize our services because we are here to serve our communities. Hi, I'm Clemson Hunt, Director of Youth Affairs. And I invite you to support us on the journey as we put programs and activities in place to reduce the level of violence in our lives and in the communities in which we live. It was during 2021 that the Ministry launched our anti-violence campaign. And for the past two years, we have embarked on a number of programs to raise awareness of violence in our society, promote behavioral change, and assist young people to internalize nonviolent ways of doing things, or simply by just saying no to violence as a means of ending the violence now. 
as our slogan goes. Over the past two years, the ministry have had youth from different communities expressing themselves in a variety of art forms. You would have seen our community messaging in the form of bus shelters and benches, and already in several locations, including Warrens, Q8, Oystein, Six Rivers, and Haggard Hall. We have also had some youth sharing their views and made calls for behavior change through our Give Me the Peace on the Mic chanting competitions, as well as using spoken word, essay writing, art, jingles, and our parenting programs. Our ministry also worked with a team of youth, including students from the Barbados Community College, to do a series of short films targeting violent acts, including those that overlook emotional violence and discrimination. As we move into the next stage of our anti-violence campaigning, our messaging will be on featuring community morals. We will also continue to promote our specific end violence social media pages on Facebook and Instagram to keep the conversations going. We will also be providing more face-to-face -face psychoeducational programs in communities, as well as another component of our parenting program. We are pleased to announce that the Barbados Royal Tennis Open is coming soon. Just stay tuned to all the media outlets. Information will be provided as we did last year. The preliminaries will be played in every constituency in Barbados. Last year we were not able to touch all, but this year it is our intention to play in every constituency in Barbados. The Barbados Royal Tennis Open, or the Ministry as it was here, are again partnering with the National Sports Council and the Barbados Royal Tennis Association. We are here to provide that platform, to, to provide that outlet for all players to play among themselves and for us to showcase our sport to the world in a professional way. Hence the reason why when we move from the community phase, then we take it to the Wildy Gymnasium for the semi-finals and finals, where then we will then reintroduce the line technology and all the other things and have the semi-final finals shown live for the world to see and we believe that with this exposure that it will bring benefits not only to raw tennis but to all players as a whole. The program started in 1995 and it was thought at that time that there was a need to decentralize independent celebrations in Barbados. But those who were born around that time or there around that time will know that the celebration centered on the parade, a church service, and a reception at Ilara Court. So the decision was then taken to decentralize and to involve the wider public in the community in independent celebrations. So hence the start of community independent celebrations. Now, the, the office that was set up that year was, was not able to adequately cover the entire island. So it was felt there was a need to involve more persons, and hence the birth of the parish independence committees. And these are 10 member volunteer bodies that's established in every parish, and they do the work um, of the community independence celebrations throughout the entire parishes. And to be a parish of mass, you have between the ages of 18 and 30. We have a male and a female selected for each parish. Um, if you want to, if, to join, because the program is a developmental one, we encourage young persons to get involved in it. We undertake training, for example, in public speaking, etiquette and protocol, um, communication, um, conflict resolutions, a wide spectrum of subject areas that we do address. And so we encourage young persons to get involved. And what they can do, they can contact the Community Independent Celebration Secretary at the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment. Our telephone numbers are 535-3835. Our email is cics at barbados.gov.bb. That's a wrap for Bridges Series 1. It has been a great pleasure. As always, we invite you to stay connected and keep up to date with the work of the ministry. Do not hesitate to call or contact us. On Instagram, the Community Development Department at Comdev Barbados, the Division of Youth Affairs at Div Youth 246, the Sports Development Unit at sportsdevelopment.bb, the National Sports Council at NSC Barbados, the Community Independence Celebration Secretariat at Community Independence 246 and the Barbados Youth Advance Tour at Barbados Youth Advance.
You can also stay connected on Facebook by visiting Community Development Department, the Division of Youth Affairs, the National Sports Council, and the Community Independent Celebration Secretariat. Or feel free to call us at 535-3835. And with that being said, thank you for joining us.